For the quotient rule, let's take a look at this. So we just wrapped up the product rule. How do we take the derivative of a product of two functions? Now let's talk about how do we take the derivative of a quotient of two functions. So given two differentiable functions, the derivative can be found as follows. So here's the, the full-blown um, official derivative, and I've got the proof below. I don't think I'm going to do the proof on the video. Sometimes I have... Um, Students do that for homework, so it might be a good practice to do it for homework um, if you want to. I will project it here, so if you wanted to take a look, but um, similar to how we did the product rule, which we did actually prove on video. So here we've got f of x over g of x. It turns out when we take the derivative of a quotient, we take the derivative of f of x times g of x minus the derivative of g of x times f of x, all divided by g of x squared. So we end up with f prime of x times g of x minus g prime of x times f of x all over g of x squared. Um, and then, of course, this is the notation that I'll use just to kind of remind us. And as we're memorizing these rules, might help to write that down at the top of your paper until you have actually committed that to memory. So look at this. It's even right here. Possibly assign this for homework. It's in my, uh, my notes to myself. Um, that this is something that could be assigned for homework because it is it is similar to how we did the um, the product rule and can, and can be done um, for homework. So here we go. Here is the proof. I will leave this um, here on the screen if I can get it there all the way to the end. Um, and just kind of I again I kind of reorder it down there at the very bottom line. Uh, reorder it, simplify. So there's quite a few lines here of simplification, but. Um, this is the derivative. And we do the same thing that we did with the product rule where we add and subtract something um, very useful. So we end up adding a zero, of course, right in there that allows us to break it apart and see those two derivatives that end up coming out in the numerator. But I want to spend the rest of the video actually just doing some examples. So let's, let's jump right into examples and practicing with the quotient rule. So here we go. So here is the quotient rule. Or here are some quotients, and now let's apply the quotient rule to them. So clearly, this is a quotient. We've looked at some. This is f of x. This is our f and our g. We're looking at a quotient of two functions, both of which we know how to take the derivative of, and because we, we've got an exponential function in the denominator and a power function in the top. So we can get in there and take the derivative. We just got to remember what is the quotient rule. So let me write it here since I know I just for the very first time showed it to you. So this is f prime times g minus g prime times f over g squared. And we're going to get in here and actually take this derivative. So again, for our first few examples, I'm going to write out um, lots of steps so that we can see that. So here's our f and our g. So when I take the derivative, and I'm going to use the derivative operator, when I take the derivative of a quotient, I take the derivative of the numerator, the function in the numerator, 7x squared. And then I multiply by the derivative, uh, by the function in the denominator, not by the derivative, by the function in the denominator. So here is my f prime times g. Then I take g prime times f. And so then I'm going to subtract the derivative, I'm going to write the derivative operator, of e to the x, the denominator, times the numerator, 7x squared. And I divide by the denominator squared. So I take e to the x and I square it. Okay. Now, I have not actually taken those derivatives. I've just written in the derivative operators there to, to indicate I am going to take those derivatives. So normally, we would jump right onto this next line, but I want to be really clear about where the functions and the derivatives are and where they're coming from. So now when we get onto the next line for f prime of x, <clears throat> final, well, actually, we might do some simple. I was going to say final answer, but we're probably going to want to simplify. This is going to become 14x times e to the x, because the derivative of 7x squared, apply the power rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this is just e to the x times 7x squared. I'll leave that in parentheses. And all over e to the x squared, or you know, if we wanted to, we could say that's e to the 2x. Obviously, that simplifies down. Just rules of exponents, we multiply the 2. So x times 2, 2x. All right. Um, now that is the derivative, but 
<laughs> if you guys haven't caught this, caught on to this by now, we often get to our derivative and then we want to simplify. So I do want to simplify, of course. I, I, I want to simplify this down because I see a common factor in the numerator and I see that it will actually cancel with something from the denominator. So I want to simplify this down. I see in the numerator I've got a common factor of uh, 7 an x, I can pull a 7 and an x from each term, and I can also pull an e to the x. So I see I've got a common factor of 7 e to the x. So, you know, as I'm, I'm looking at that numerator, right, that's my, my thought bubble. Let's clean this up, pull out a common factor. So let's do it. This is going to become... Oh, you know, I in my little thought bubble, I put 7, but I didn't put x. So 7 and x, actually, not just e to the x. Let's get it, get out the greatest, the GCF, not just the, the, let's pull out the GCF, not just the common factor, the greatest common factor, of course. All right, so 7x e to the x, pull that out. When I do that, I'm going to have simply 2 left from the first term minus, and in the other, the last term, all that's left is x. Look at how nice that uh, cleans up, right? That whole numerator is now just a product of um 7x e to the x times 2 minus x, that is very nice, over e to the 2x. And then actually one of those x's will cancel, one of those x's will reduce. And so we could actually write this as, in our final reduced form, we could actually write this as 7x times 2 minus x over e to the x. And there we go. That is a nice form of the derivative. I didn't ask it on this, but you know, I, I keep kind of hinting as to why we want to write our derivatives in their most simplified form. And so let's just make this, uh, let's make part A here. Let's add to this. Let's say find f prime of x. And then for part B, let's add another part and just say find the horizontal tangent lines. 2 f of x. Um, this is why we want it in its simplified form, because if I want to find the horizontal tangent lines, 2 f of x, what I want to do here is I want to set the derivative. When I say horizontal tangent lines, that means the derivative is equal to 0. That's when f prime of x actually equals 0. So if I want to find when that happens, I do want this derivative in its most simplified form, because f prime of x being equal to 0, that would set 7x 2 minus x over e to the x equal to 0. And what we end up with is finding that that's the same as looking at when the numerator, 7x times 2 minus x equals 0. Or, and now we're just applying algebra, it's already in its factored form. This becomes a very simple calculation. Uh, this is just simply going to be when x is 0 or when x is 2. Okay, we could find those ordered pairs, we could plug them back into the original function, but we'll leave it at that. Um, we know we could actually plot those on the graph and go back to the original function, and if we had a graph, we could show that that's right where those horizontal tangent lines are. But this is why we do this simplification, so that when we go to answer follow-up questions, they're, they're easier to answer because we're working with simplified forms of the derivative. Okay? It's, not, it's not just a practice of algebra, right? It's, it's because it's useful. It has uh, use to us. Okay. So there's our first quotient rule. Let's take a look at our next one. So let's take let's take the derivative of 3x squared minus 5x plus 1 over 2x minus 3. And again, here is our function, and here f of x, our numerator is the function f of x, and our denominator is the function g of x. And so remembering that when we, and I'll just rewrite it again, and you know what, I think this is really good practice. The more you write things, the more they become committed to memory, which we want to get, we don't want to have to look up the quotient rule, every time we have to take the derivative of a quotient from here until you finish Calc 3, right? And you will take lots of derivatives of quotients. So c commit this to memory, right? Make a flashcard, I don't know, write it on the mirror with a whiteboard pen or something. So every time you're brushing your teeth, you're looking at it. Um, whatever, right? I joke around about that, but I am I am serious. You want to commit this to memory. You want to become an efficient calculus student. You don't want to always be referencing something. So whatever it takes. Flashcards were um, my method in college on how to remember things. And so, you know, I had lots of flashcards and I, I would look over them while eating cereal in the morning. But commit this 
formula for the quotient rule to memory for the product rule to memory so that you can become very efficient at taking derivatives. Okay, so that said, I just got I'll get off my soapbox now and um, <laughs> go back to taking derivatives. So we have a quotient, so we're going to take the derivative using the quotient rule. And again, for our first few examples here, I'm going to write in the derivative operator so you can see where everything's coming from. So this is 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. We need to take the derivative of the numerator, then multiply by the denominator. Then we need to take the derivative of the, and subtract the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. So, so we're not actually taking the derivatives yet, I'm just writing out the formula for the derivative of a quotient. And then we have 2x minus 3, the denominator squared, we have g squared in the bottom. And then we're going to get in here and we're going to actually take those derivatives. So the derivative of 3x squared minus 5x plus 1, that is, again, just applying that power rule, that power function rule that says this is 6x minus 5 times 2x minus 3 minus, then the derivative of 2x minus 3 is just 2, because the derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of the constant is 0. Then we're going to multiply by 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. We'll have to simplify, of course, that numerator, because we'd never want to leave our derivative in this long, expanded, algebraic mess. We want to get it cleaned up, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So we've got the derivative applying that quotient rule, now we go through and we actually simplify. So getting in here um, and simplifying in the numerator there, let's see, I'm going to have um, 12x squared minus 18x minus 10x plus 15 minus 6x squared plus 10x minus 2, all divided by 2x minus 3 squared. So combining like terms here, let's see, we've got a 12x squared and a negative 6x squared, so we get 6x squared, and then on our x terms, we have a negative 18x, a negative 10x, and a positive 10x, so that'll give me a negative 18x, and then we've got our 15 and our negative 2, so that'll be a 13, and divided by 2x minus 3 squared, and so here's our derivative, and you know, our motivation, our reasoning for wanting to simplify as much as we've done right here and to get through and make sure we give it in its nicest, uh, cleanest form is one, we want to be able to have a nice, clean, simplified derivative so that we can use it to answer follow-up questions. So, for instance, if we wanted to find horizontal tangent lines as an extension here, horizontal tangent lines, we will set this equal to zero and we'll see what we get. So let's take our, remember horizontal tangent lines mean when the derivative is equal to zero, when the slopes of the tangent lines equal zero. So we're going to set this derivative 6x squared minus 18x plus 13 over 2x minus 3 quantity squared, set that equal to zero. And then, um, obviously, this um, ratio is going to be equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So when 6, so this is going to occur when 6x squared minus 18x plus 13. We could also have multiplied both um, sides of the equation by 2x minus 3 squared and gotten to the same result. So this is true when this is equal to zero. And um, I don't believe this is going to factor, so let's just jump into the quadratic formula. So remember with quadratics, of course, if they factor, that's very convenient um, to give us rational roots. But if not, we still can find irrational or even imaginary roots using the quadratic formula. So let's not forget the quadratic formula. This we could solve for the zeros of this equation. Plug this in. So let's see here. We're going to get 18 plus or minus the square root of 18 squared minus 4 times 6 times 13, all divided by 2 times 6, and that's going to be uh, 324, so 18 squared is 324 minus, and then if we take 4 times 6 times 13, a little too late, let me grab the calculator, 312 over 12, 
and then that's going to be 18 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 12. And um, we can definitely reduce that a little bit further. So let's do that. So 18 to root 3 over 12. And then we can reduce a uh, common factor of 2 from all of those. So this ends up being 9 plus or minus root 3 over 6. So we've got horizontal tangent lines, just taking that example a little bit further, um, not just by finding the derivative, but after finding the derivative, we could find where the horizontal tangent lines are. And so we've got horizontal tangent lines at x equals 9 plus root 3 over 6 and at x equals 9 minus root 3 over 6. So two places where we actually have horizontal tangent lines. And there we go. This out. This guy is a product and a quotient. So this will happen. We will have layers, right? So notice that in the numerator, for our function that is in the numerator, we actually have a product of two functions, right? So we've got a product in the numerator, and then obviously it is also a quotient. So what we're doing here is we're actually have layers of the rules, right? We've got products in a quotient, okay? So when we take the derivative, I'm going to be really careful to lay this out. When we take the derivative, we have to apply the rules in the appropriate order. So I see that I have the big quotient, so that's where I'm going to start. And again, just to remind us, right, um, because maybe some of us haven't um, had a chance in the last couple minutes to memorize this yet, but I know you are tomorrow morning while you're brushing your teeth, you're going to be saying the quotient rule. So uh, the derivative of f over g of x prime is equal to f prime times g minus g prime times f all over g squared. So again, right, I think I've written it four times now, so we'll, we'll have this down. So we'll start with the quotient because obviously this is in a large quotient. We have a quotient. When we get into the numerator, that's when we'll have to think about the product rule. So the product rule, let's write the product rule up here too. We'll get to that. And the product rule says f prime times g plus g prime times f. So we'll get into the product rule once we get to taking the derivative of the numerator. And so let's let's do this. Let's lay it out. Um, I because of space and I, I wrote these rules right there. I'm going to actually lay it out down here, uh, kind of in the middle of the page here. So f prime of x. We start by saying, okay, we need in order to take the product rule, we need the derivative of the top. 5x cubed times e to the x times the bottom, 2x squared minus 7. So I'm just applying just applying that product rule right now. I haven't actually taken the derivative. I'm just writing in the derivative operators. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of the bottom is 2x squared minus 7 times the top, and the top is that 5x cubed e to the x. And we're going to divide that whole thing, the whole shebang, by 2x squared minus 7 squared. Okay, so we have applied the quotient rule because we were given a quotient of functions. But in that process of applying the quotient rule, I come across a product. So when I go to take this first derivative right here, I actually have to apply the product rule. So to take that derivative right there, I'm going to apply the product rule. So f prime of x is going to be equal to, when I apply the product rule, I take the derivative, here's my first function, here's my second function, and I'm going to go ahead and do that product rule. I think we've practiced enough with product rule in the previous videos that we can go ahead and go right to the actual derivatives. So the derivative of 5x cubed is going to be 15x squared times e to the x, plus the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times 5x cubed. Okay, so I have applied the product rule there. Then that gets multiplied by 2x squared minus 7. 
okay, just carrying everything else down. Now, this is not a product, so I just can take that derivative directly. So that's just going to be actually just 4x because the derivative of 7 is 0. And then we multiply by 5x cubed e to the x. And then that, oh, that was a terrible line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then that is all over 2x squared minus 7 squared. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we're, we get our simplification. So we definitely want to get our simplification done here as we go. Okay. All right. Um, now we're going to get in here and we are going to look at simplifying. Uh, let's see here. How do I want to simplify? I'm looking at this guy and I'm feeling like within here, I see uh, so many common factors that I want to get that simplified. I want to multiply this out. Um, I am going to have to do some multiplication here, but before doing that, instead of doing it with this big, um, enormous binomial, I'm going to pull out some common factors here and see what we get. So if I pull out right here, I notice that I actually have a 5 x squared e to the x that I could pull out as a common factor, which is going to leave me with a 3 plus x times 2x squared minus 7. And over here, this is going to become 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 x to the fourth e to the x. All right. And all divided by 2x squared minus 7 squared. Okay, so continuing down this road, this is going to be now... I'm looking at this and thinking, let's simp let's expand out that uh, that product at the same time as pulling out a five x squared e to the x from this term and from this term. So this guy over here is going to be left with a minus. We're pulling out that five x squared e to the x, so we're going to be left with a minus four x squared, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute and expand, so doing lots of algebra here at once, I'm going to distribute and expand that, so that's going to become 6x squared minus 21 plus 2x cubed minus 7x. All of that is over 2x squared minus 7 squared, and I can continue to simplify 5x squared e to the x. And let's see, on this one, we're going to just reorder that polynomial. 2x cubed uh, plus 2x squared minus 7x minus 21 all over 2x squared minus 7 squared. Whew! Take a deep breath, a sigh, and there is our derivative. Okay, so that was a nice little layering, right? Like this is f prime of x. Uh, that was a nice layering because we had that product within a quotient. So as we went through and when, when we took the derivative of the numerator, we had to remember that the numerator itself was a product and we had to apply the product rule. All right, to wrap up this video and to wrap up our product and quotient rules section, let's do a problem that does not have a function definition, but rather a graph. And this is one of those more conceptual problems because we have to think about um, really what a derivative means and how the functions that we're given are defined. So right here, this tells me, and I pulled this actually right out of our textbook so that I could use a graph that was in the textbook. So right here, this says P of X equals F of X times G of X. And then part A says, let's actually find P prime of two. Well, if P of X is a product, which it is, right? P of X is this product. f of x times g of x, and, and just they, they use capital F and G for this particular problem, so we'll use capital F and G as we're going. When I take the derivative, I am literally just applying the product rule, but the product rule <laughs> is by definition um, the derivative of a product. So if the function is defined as a product, then the derivative will be uh, found through the product rule. So this is f prime of x 
times g of x plus g prime of x. times f of x. And if I want p prime of 2, then that's what I have to plug in. I'm going to plug in 2. So p prime of 2 is going to be f prime of 2 times g of 2 plus g prime of 2 times f of 2. And then we have to just go to the graph to actually find those. So what does f prime of 2 actually represent? So f prime of 2 is representing the slope of the tangent line at 2. So f prime of 2, so if we go over to 2 and we come up here to the graph, notice on the graph right here, and I know it's kind of small, um, but right there at 2, because this was x equals 2, 3, 4, so right here at 2, notice that the slope or the tangent line would be horizontal. So therefore, the slope of the tangent line would actually be 0. So this is actually equal to 0 times, I mean, for good measure, let's go ahead and put in g of 2. g of 2 itself is actually 2. So g of 2 is 2. So we'll plug in 2 plus, I'll put that in red. I'm sorry, I'll put that in blue since g is blue. So times 2 plus, well, then we are asked to find g prime of 2. But g prime of 2 represents the slope of the tangent line at 2. So if this is our tangent line at 2, the slope of this line would be up 1 and over 2. We can see that just by uh, actually calculating a slope. So uh, rise 1, run 2. The, all across this line, uh, we have a slope of um, one half because we rise one run two so this is going to be one half and then we go to f of two well what is f of two f of two has a horizontal tangent line but the function value is three so that would be equal to three and then we have to just <clears throat> expand that out zero times two is zero one half times three is three halves and our answer would be three halves now, we would do the same thing. I'm going to actually not do B because the video is getting a little long. B is finding Q prime of 7, where Q is defined as F over G of X. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and end here because it would be the same thing, just an application of the quotient rule. Okay? And then using the graph to come up with that. So we can apply a product and quotient rule if we have a graph of a function too. Just remembering, right, that the, on a graph, the derivative represents the slopes of the tangent lines. And if a function is defined to be a product or a quotient, when we take the derivative, we have to apply that product or quotient rule.